Thank you so much, choir. May the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I indeed take this opportunity to thank God who has allowed me to stand here to bring forth his word to us and also to thank our provost for the permission uh, that he has given me uh, to stand on this pulpit. I will want to just go straight into the word and we'll be looking at some of the scriptures that has been read to us <clears throat> and maybe a few others as the Lord leads. But before we get into those scriptures, when I was preparing, I came across two quotations that I want to bring to us as we start this morning. One from Mother Teresa, and we know that name very well, and he said, she said these words. She said, love is the ultimate gift of ourselves to others. Love is the ultimate gift of ourselves to others. When we stop giving, we stop loving. When we stop loving, we stop growing. And unless we grow, we will never attain personal fulfillment. And I thought that was neat or cool to remember, especially as we think about the Thanksgiving, media Thanksgiving. Say that love is the ultimate gift and love is what makes us or pulls us to give generously to the Lord and to others. And if we stop loving, we stop growing. And if we stop growing, we'll never attain that fulfillment that we all desire. Winston Churchill as well, we know the name, said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. We make a living by what we get. So when we work, that's why we work every day, so that we make a living. But we make a life. So there's a difference of making a living and making a life, and says make a life by what we give. And I think that gives us or helps us understand the importance of giving to others and to the Lord. And this media Thanksgiving month, so far three weeks we've been talking about this, and this helps me to summarize it very well and say that the first time we talked about developing a heart of thanksgiving and how that is very important. Then we talked about thanksgiving that honors God. And then we were able to talk last week about thanksgiving as an act of faith. You know, <clears throat> one constant thing that stands out in all this is that thanksgiving, in thanksgiving there is giving. In thanksgiving, there is giving. We are coming to God to tell him thank you because we love you. And this leads to giving, and in giving we grow, and in growing we find personal fulfillment, and in that we make a life as well. So today, we want to kind of think about that, but in a different way of thinking of generosity and giving generosity and giving. That's our message for today. You can turn to your neighbor and just tell them generosity and giving. Now, I want to start by thinking about this word generosity. What does it really mean? And I came across some definitions that I thought were neat to think through. And the first definition was saying that generosity is the virtue of giving good things to others the virtue of giving good things to others freely and abundantly. And I thought those were some key words there. Giving, but not just giving anything, giving good things. And this giving, as much as we are giving to others, and we know that we're also giving to God good things. But these things, you are giving them freely, and you are giving them abundantly. And our reading in First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians talks about giving freely, giving cheerfully without being pushed to do so. 
The other definition I got is that generosity is willingness to give, share, or contribute freely. Willingness, and I like the word willingness. So it's something that I do out of my free will. No one has to really make me do it. And he says, I'm giving his willingness to give or share and contribute freely without expecting anything in return. And I was also looking at that. Why do we give? And many times I think we give because we are expecting something. And, and that's why sometimes people stop giving because what they were expecting didn't come their way. But if that is the reason why we give, we will keep on getting disappointed. We know God is so good to bless us when we give. But he's not obligated. He's already done so much because even whatever we are giving has already come from him. And I think sometimes the teaching out there makes us feel that we are really pushed to give and then I give and then I'm really having this high expectation. And then when nothing happens, I think like either we were played or we were cheated or something happened and it, we were not given the right information. But I want to tell us that generosity is I am giving without expecting anything. Look at normal life. And probably all of us in one way or the other we've been involved in giving to people in either weddings or funerals. And I have kind of kept watching what happens when there's someone that is a little bit of a higher class. People tend to give more because they know if it is my turn and I go to them, they will also give more. But if it is if someone that we think, now we mutu atakuna kitu atanipatia sana, we tend to give less because I'm saying, after all, there is nothing they will give back to me. You see now that's the tendency, yet I feel that when we want to be generous in our giving, it's not about what will I get in return. And especially when we are giving God generously, and as I said earlier, we expect God to bless us, but that is under his own obligation. He decides to do what he wants to do. And sometimes the way he blesses us is, is in different ways than even what we may have been expecting. The Bible says he does more than we can ever think or imagine. So if you limited God in a certain way that I'm giving this 100,000 because I want this, and God sometimes will surprise you. And so as we think about this, the question I want to ask ourselves as we get into this is that uh, why are we giving? You know, giving should be a way of life that reflects the very essence of God's character. Because God indeed is the first giver in the Bible. He's, he's the one who created us. is the one who gave us the air we breathe and the land we live in. But more so is the one who gave us his son, Jesus. So when we give, we, it should be just a part of our life and it reflects the essence, the, the character of God. So I want to think about, first of all, why is generosity important? And then we also will be considering, then how can we give generously? What are some of the things that we can look at? So the first thing, why is generosity important? Gener one, generosity uplifts our spirits, creates a sense of purpose, and brings deep, deep satisfaction and joy. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful there. But generosity uplifts our spirits. And I think that makes us feel that we are a blessing to the kingdom of God and to others and brings a certain fulfillment. It says it also creates a sense of purpose. My existence has a purpose. I don't just exist for the sake of existing. I'm existing because I'm making a difference in my world and in our world. We all cannot do the same things. We are different in the abilities God has given to us. As much as all of us will want to stand on this pulpit and preach, they may not. But by the time you are giving your money and someone is preaching the word of God, you are part and parcel of that. And that gives you a purpose of living. 
The organization I serve with is a faith-based organization. We trust God to provide our needs. And therefore, we talk with people, we talk with Christians to give. And every time I'm sharing with people our needs, what I tell them, when I am reaching out to the lost with the gospel, when I travel to Pakistan to share the gospel, when I go to India or wherever else to train people who reach others, you may have not gone with me, but if you gave your money for me to go, you were part of what God did. That's what happens. So there is a sense of purpose of your existence, and then it brings satisfaction and joy. I don't know whether you have ever given to someone and they tell you thank you, and when they tell you thank you and the joy you see in their eye and their face, makes you even more happier than them that you gave to. Has they ever, they've asked, that ever happened to you? You know, when there's someone who was stuck and was in need, and if you didn't give, maybe a life was lost, and you gave, and a life was saved. And you say, thank God I acted and did what I did. You see, it brings satisfaction. And how more when we give to God, and we see that his work is continuing, because we are giving generously. So that's what generosity has, does. In fact, research has found out uh, that giving activates what they call neural pathways associated with reward and happiness in our minds and our brain. That, that's a research that has been done. So you know there's something that I'm cooking out here, and it says leading to improved well-being and overall life satisfaction. That's what giving does. And giving also helps us develop empathy. It helps us develop gratitude and a greater appreciation for the abundance that God has bestowed upon us in our lives. And I think that's why Acts chapter 20 verse 35 summarizes it so clearly when he say, it says that blessed is the one who gives than the one who receives. I think he must have known that as you give, you are more blessed because of the joy, the satisfaction, the sense of purpose that this gives in your life. God designed generosity to bring joy, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose for both the giver and the recipient. Because also the recipient will be joyful that indeed you, pay, you played a part in their lives. So when we talk about generosity and giving, that's the first thing that giving does to us. Number two, giving is not merely a transaction, but a powerful act that shapes our character and spiritual growth. It's not just a transaction or a moment thing of giving the finances, and sometimes it may involve giving my service or just being available for someone who needs me to be available for them and giving help or support, it's not just that transaction. It is a powerful act that shapes our character and spiritual growth. In other words, when we are giving, we develop a character of worshiping God and it helps us in spiritually growing. Generous giving is not just donating money or resources, but it is also aligning our hearts and minds with God's will, because that is what God desires. So we are aligning our minds and will uh, to God in that kind of a way. It is a spiritual practice that cultivates our relationship with God and strengthens our faith. And I, and, and, and I, I just pray that God will help us that when we hear this word, because unfortunately every time we hear this word giving, a preacher stands and starts talking about there are people who switches off. And maybe I'm speaking here and someone, I to mescare you, mambo ya kotoa ya kotosha. So they are already not here. But this is, this is, this is, even if you are not going to give to the cathedral, I hope that you will. But this is for you and for your own good. Actually, I'm not here to ask you to give as per se as to the benefit that you gain out of being generous. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Giving helps us develop a deeper relationship with God and an appreciation of God's provision in our lives. And we are telling God, I am because you are. You are the one who has allowed me to be in existence. 
You are the one who sustains me. You are the one who wakes me up in the morning, allows me to go to my responsibilities, and allows me to come back at home. And by the way, it's not for granted that that happens. We know that there are people who walk under the doorsteps of their houses. What happens? They are knocked. They are dead. The fact that you are alive and you go always travel, move to your workplace, to your business, and to whatever, and you are here, is to tell God, God, this is you doing it for me. And the only thing is to live in appreciation. It enables us to live a life of purpose and meaning, knowing that we are contributing in God's kingdom and making a difference in the lives of others. This is very, very important. You know, we, we really have to appreciate life because life is precious. I remember one time where I live, just a long kind of a, a road, and, and, and I was going to get my car and come back and go with my wife. And by the time I was going, she was almost knocked by a motorbike right there. Just an, and actually she got a little bit hurt there. And I'm like, just like a twinkle of eye, this would have been something else. And you know, those kind of situ situations just make us to appreciate life and that God is so generous to us. Even if you are not perfectly healthy, the fact that you are able to bring yourself here. Number three, by giving generously, we acknowledge that everything we have comes from God and that we are merely stewards of his blessings. So we are only but stewards. And I think that is just kind of emphasizing what I've already said. So when we give, not just financial contributions, but in any other way, it's more of a heart of gratitude, heart of trusting God, as we talked about, an act of faith, an act of obedience to God. That's what we are doing. We are saying, thank you, God, for all that you have given us. And we are demonstrating our trust in him to continue to provide today and tomorrow and the days to come. This is an act of worship and service, as I said, and reflecting God's love of generosity to us. You see, giving generously is interconnected with gratitude. When we give selflessly, we cultivate gratitude of the abundance, for the abundance in our lives, and recognizing the capacity of making a positive change in our church, in our world, and in the lives of people out there. And again, we say gratitude generates, generates generosity. The awareness of God's goodness and provision naturally leads to gratitude. Second Corinthians chapter 9, that was read, verse 11, says, You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Our generosity not only blesses others, but also prompts them to give thanks as a result. And by the time they are giving thanks and praising God because you are, you are, you are, you are giving to them, the Lord sees what you did. Praise the Lord. Number four, generosity reaps eternal rewards. And we cannot overemphasize this. There is eternal reward as a result of this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, talks about not keeping, storing our treasures on earth where moths will eat them and they be destroyed. But in rather thinking about storing them in the kingdom of God. And storing them in the kingdom of God means sowing in another person's life. You know, being a blessing to the kingdom of God and other people's life, live long even after you are gone. People, someone say that you, 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 you can only make an impact when you impact other people's lives. 
And the way we impact other people's lives is by being generous in all areas. Either by just being available when they need us, or offering our services, or giving uh, financially. Generosity means storing treasures in heaven. When we invest in God's kingdom and prioritize eternal values over temporal possessions, we lay for ourselves riches that will last for eternity. And one thing that I always say is that what is the legacy that can live long even when I'm gone? What can I be remembered for or with when I am gone? Can someone say when so-and-so was here, they impacted our lives? Can our presence make a difference? And can our absence be felt because of the impact that we have? I don't know if this church, if by any chance you are not there, whether people will even feel you are absence. They will know that you are not there because of the impact or it will be like nothing happened. You know, when I serve God and I do the ministry, one of the prayers I have, and I always keep saying this, is that when I am done and when I go back to heaven, all I want to hear from Jesus is that well done, good and faithful servant. And my faithfulness depends on how I live today and the impact I make today with all that the Lord has given in my life. Finally, how should we practice generosity? How should we practice generosity? I want to run through this very fast. Number one, giving generously should be done out of love. Out of love. And our reading again showed us the love and the grace that we've experienced from God should be the motivation of why we give. The best model is Jesus Christ himself, who embodied the essence of generosity during his earthly ministry. His life and teaching provided an extraordinary model of selflessness, of compassion, and of sacrificial giving. We cannot compare. Yet, he is our perfect example. And is the, Paul says that we need to follow him as he follows Christ, and as we follow Christ's example in our lives. His words, his actions, demonstrated the depths of God's love, a transformative power of generosity, true generosity. And that's what should motivate us to do what we do. Whether we are preaching the gospel, we should not preach it to be seen or for personal gain. It should be out of love for God and for the people of God. Whether I am serving in choir or an usher or whatever capacity, what is my motivation? Because that is what God looks at, that heart. In fact, being generous is not solely about the quantity or the value of what is given, rather than the spirit and the intention behind it. So I think the intention behind it, the spirit behind it, it can be little, but it can make a big difference. By the way, I have realized that those who give many times is not necessarily because they have a lot. It's because they just have a heart of giving. By the way, people who support God's work, because I work in a ministry, and, 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 and I, I, we have some people who support us from, from, from the U.S. in our ministry, we realize some of them are very old people, and some of them are people who deny themselves, say, because I want to give to a ministry, I will not eat lunch for two days. The money I will have gone to eat for lunch, I will keep it. And some people have formed a foundation that they support big organizations. Not because they have a lot, by the way. But the spirit behind it. The intention behind it. That I can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Can be a blessing to the cathedral. I can be a blessing to someone else who needs my help. Is what matters. It is done out of love without expecting anything in return. So do you 
solely give generously because you love God. You know, Amy Carmichael said, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Simple statement, but I think a very powerful one. So that should be the motivation. Number two, giving should be cheerful and a sacrificial act. Cheerful and a sacrificial act. Act. Second Corinthians 7, 9, 7 says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Giving should be cheerful and sacrificial, done freely out of obedience to God. This means that giving should be done, should not be forced or done out of obligation but should come from a joyful and a grateful heart. In fact, I love when Provo sometimes says, if you have not decided to give, don't give, because you must have prayed about it and say, I am joyful to give. I want to give. So you are not just giving because you are not just giving because you are not just Then that doesn't attract God's blessings. Because it's not cheerful. It's not done freely. It's like you feel you are compelled to do it. And if you want God to bless you of your giving, it should be done that way. And this is something that I have to pray about myself. I, in the morning, I was giving an example of my wife who, who, who sometimes I feel gives until it hurts. And she is even willing, honey, Someone is really in need. So Nikopeshe person in And I'm like, you don't have. So you say you don't have. But she's willing to, to borrow, to give. And the other day on Friday, I was somewhere and she called me. Someone is having a wedding and they are stuck. They need a car. Please. And I'm like, you know I'm, a, I'm, I'm busy with this car. Please, please, if you can just bring it. And I'm like, what do I do? I, I had no choice. But I, I brought the car. And, and, and yesterday I needed to use it, but now I had to find, just kind of let it be. You know, you know when you give, and, and then when these people brought the car in the night, you know, you see the fulfillment and the joy and the thank you. And you say, after all, God, you are the one who gave this to me. And it has blessed someone, glory be to your name. You know, someone said, sacrifice is a better measure of where your heart is. So when we sacrifice and we give freely, it shows that our heart is connected with God. And that is very important. Open-hearted generosity is a way of letting go with kindness and with gentleness that has no regret or feeling of loss in any way. You say, God, thank you that I gave. Thank you that I was willing to let go. When we practice generosity this way, there is no reluctance in wanting to supply the needs of others, only looking forward for, what, uh, for tomorrow and saying that is in the hands of God. Proverbs chapter 12, 11, verse 24, 25 says, One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be done what? Be refreshed. And in fact, that's what my wife reminded me with. Says, you know, you also need to be refreshed. So refresh others. And, 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 and that is what it is. And then the final one, give, give abundantly. Give abundantly. I'm not sure what that means to you. And when I talk about abundantly, I'm not necessarily talking about the quantity. But we are talking about what you see written here in our bulletin about this widow. If you look through, I think I preached something on this widow one time right here. But that's what we are talking about, giving abundantly. It may be just the last coin you have and you are saying as little as it is, then I'm giving it to God. And if you look at what is written there, you see the blessings and the recommendation of Jesus himself. I like Exodus that was read, 36. And from verse 5 to 7, 
Friends, I don't know whether this can happen. In the morning provost, I was asking, I don't know if it happened that people gave until you tell them, umejua metoa ya kutosha, musilete tena pesa. I don't know. Can you imagine that? <laughs> we have enough. We have enough. Please don't, don't give anymore. You can find another place to take your money. I don't know what that will look like. But you know it's possible. Because we have wealth, we have money, we have everything. Hear what the, Lord, the Bible says. And say to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order that they sent his word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more. Because what they already had was more than enough to do the work. Well, giving abundantly invites us to draw deeply upon knowing that our lives are plentiful and bountiful enough. Within each one of us, we have unlimited supply of love, compassion, and any other gift that we can give to others and to God. And the Bible says that it is from abundant heart that generosity flows. Someone called Henry Nowen said, when we give generously with an abundance mentality, what we give away will multiply. When we give generously with an abundance mentality, what we give away will multiply. Friends, as we conclude this morning, by understanding the significance of generosity, embracing its transformative power, and cultivating a lifestyle of giving, we tap boundless joy that comes from selflessly sharing our time, our resources, and our love with people of God and with God. May we embrace the beauty of giving generously and become agents of love, agents of compassion, and agents of making a difference in the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for your word today. I pray that may you continue to make these words grow in our hearts and bring forth fruit just as you desire. In Jesus' name, amen.